Hey teachers, with so many of you moving to remote learning, I've been getting lots of questions about what are virtual activities that you can be using to engage your students right now. Now I've already created videos about how to have a successful virtual book club and how to have a successful virtual field trip. But some of the questions that I have been getting the most lately have to do with how do you do a virtual scavenger hunt? So, I compiled a list of all my favorite virtual scavenger hunt ideas. I reached out to all of my teacher friends. I posted in Facebook groups and basically I collected as many virtual scavenger hunt ideas as I could find. And today I'm going to share all of them with you. Now I'm going to be sharing a lot of ideas in this video, so I want you to know that if I'm moving too quickly or if you can't get through all of them, I have posted a link to a blog post I wrote uh, that also lists all of these ideas. So you can also go there and print off all of the ideas if you need them. But a virtual scavenger hunt can be done using any video conferencing uh, program that you are using to teach your students right now. So this includes Zoom, Google Hangouts, Google Meet, uh, Microsoft Teams, Skype, any of those things. Even programs like Flipgrid can be used for a scavenger hunt. So before I dive into all of the different scavenger hunts that you can do, I want to make sure you know what is the best way to run a virtual scavenger hunt with your students. So to do that, you are going to first tell your students what to look for or what to find. Then you are going to set a timer for however much time you think your students need to go and find that object. I recommend anywhere from 30 seconds to one minute. Now make sure your students know that when the timer goes off, they have to be sitting in their seat with that object. You can't be waiting for students while they're running around looking for things or this can drag on forever. They need to know that when time is up, they gotta be in their seats with their object. Now, I want to also tell you another way that you can run a virtual scavenger hunt um, just in case you wanna switch it up or do things a little bit differently. You could also uh, instead of giving students one object to find at a time, you could give them a list of objects and set your timer for a longer period of time, however long you think they need to find as many things on that list as possible, and then make sure that students are back in their seats with all of those objects when that time is up, and you can have them share multiple objects at one time. Now, last but not least, we talk about Flipgrid a lot on this channel, so I want to share uh, what a virtual scavenger hunt could look like on Flipgrid because that's a little bit of a different program where you post a topic and then your students respond with a video. You're not all live at the same time. So if you want to use Flipgrid to do a virtual scavenger hunt, you're basically going to do the same thing. You're going to give your students an object or a list of objects in your initial post, and then you are going to have students respond in their video by showing you all of the objects that they found. So there's a couple different options for how you can run your virtual scavenger hunt depending on the time that you have to do it and the, the specific video conferencing software that you are using. Now when it comes to running your virtual scavenger hunt, you've also got a couple different options for how students share what they find and whether or not it's a game scenario. Now you could have a situation where you have students go and look for an object and then come back and if their object matches what they were supposed to look for, each of those students could earn a point. That's if you want to make it more of a game. Now, if you don't want it to be a game, you don't want that competitiveness there. I know I've had classes before where if things get too competitive, um, behavior becomes an issue. So maybe you just want students to go and look for things and then when they come back, explain how that relates to what they were supposed to find. But keep in mind that a virtual scavenger hunt, it can be academic. So when they're bringing something back and explaining what they found, they can be relating it to a standard or you could just use a virtual scavenger hunt to get your students to connect with you and with each other during this time of social distancing. So it can also be a fun SEL 
or morning meeting activity. Now, the last thing I wanna go over before we move into the specific types of virtual scavenger hunts that you can do are the rules. Just like we have rules in the classroom when we do games and activities, students need rules in their digital learning space as well. So you can create rules for your students based on their needs and the specific scavenger hunt that you're doing. But a few things that I will recommend is number one, uh, make sure students know that they are not allowed to get out of their seat until the timer starts. You don't want them up and moving around while you're still giving directions or while you're sharing information. So no student out of their seat until the timer starts. Then all students need to be back in their seats by the time the timer goes off. And we've talked about this already. We don't want students up and running around when other students are sharing their answers or you're presenting more information. The third rule that I suggest is make sure students know not to touch anything that they shouldn't. It may seem like common sense because they're in their own home when they're doing the learning, but we wanna make sure that students aren't grabbing anything that they know they shouldn't be touching. Every kid has things in their homes that their parents don't want them to touch, and this is not the time to do it. And the last rule that I have for you is to encourage your students to practice safety in their homes. They shouldn't be up running around the house if that's not something that they would normally do. Um, once again, they need to be careful what they touch. They shouldn't be grabbing knives or weapons or sharp objects. They need to make sure that they are practicing safety and you can discuss what that looks like before your students get started. So now let's dive into what I know you're really here for and that is the different types of virtual scavenger hunts that you can do. Now I've broken these down into different categories. We're gonna talk about math virtual scavenger hunts, ELA virtual scavenger hunts, and then ones that you can do just for fun to get conversations going with your class. So let's go ahead and start with math virtual scavenger hunts, and I've got five for you. The first one is one of my favorite ones, and this is a, a measurement scavenger hunt. So for example, you could tell students to go and find something that is about five inches in length, or something that would hold about one cup. Um, you can do all different types of both customary and metric measurements and go have your students look for those things. Another one, and this is one I actually do in the classroom a lot of the times, is a geometry scavenger hunt. You can have students go look for 2D shapes, 3D shapes, angles, types of lines, anything like that. Next is a money scavenger hunt, and this is a really fun one. And for this one, you might wanna tell students to come to your classroom meeting uh, with as many coins as possible. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna give students a dollar amount, say $1.16. And students have to use all of the coins that they have with them to create $1.16. I like to do this with just coins, no dollar bills involved. The fourth one is an even or odd scavenger hunt. So for this, you're gonna tell students to go find an even number of something or an odd number of something. So maybe they bring back two candles to represent an even number or five pieces of candy to represent an odd number. And the last one is a factor scavenger hunt. So you are gonna tell students to go find a number that is a factor of another number. So for example, if I were to tell students, go find a number of something that is a factor of eight, they might come back with two stuffed animals or five, or not five, because that's not a factor of eight, four Barbies. Um, but basically they're gonna come back with a number of something that is a factor of whatever you call out. So those are some of my favorite math virtual scavenger hunts. All right, now that we've talked about math, I've got six ELA virtual scavenger hunts for you. Now the first one is a genre scavenger hunt. And for this one, you're gonna have students go search for examples of various literary genres. So you may ask students to go find a mystery or a biography, and they don't have to just find books. They could find newspaper articles, magazine articles. They could even find an article online in the time that you've given. My second scavenger hunt is a vocabulary scavenger hunt. 
So you're gonna give students a vocabulary word that they've been learning, and they're gonna go find that word in any type of writing and bring it back, and they're gonna share how the word is used in a sentence. My third one is a theme scavenger hunt. So you are going to give students an example of a theme, for example, good conquers evil. And students must go find something that represents that theme. And it doesn't even necessarily have to be a book. Maybe it's a movie that has that theme in it. Next, have students find something that represents a simile or a metaphor. For example, they might bring back a stuffed animal of a mouse and say this represents the saying quiet as a mouse. You could also do a rhyming scavenger hunt. For example, say a random word such as broom and tell students they have to go find an object that rhymes with that word. Okay, my sixth and final ELA scavenger hunt is a little bit different. For this last one, you're gonna go tell students to find any random object. And this time, students are gonna bring that object back, but they're not going to show anyone in the class what the object is. Instead, they are going to use only sensory words to describe the object and see if the other members of their class can figure out what they're holding only using sensory words. So there are six ELA virtual scavenger hunts for you to try. So far, we have talked about scavenger hunts for math and ELA, which you can use to reinforce and teach standards. The last scavenger hunts I'm gonna share with you are more so for fun, but they're great ways to get students engaged and communicating with one another. So the first one I have for you is an alphabet scavenger hunt. And with this one, you're gonna go through every letter of the alphabet and have students find and bring back something that starts with that letter. Now, if you really wanna throw your students off and challenge them, don't go in the exact order of the alphabet. You could do A and then P and then U and go out of order so that way students don't know what to expect next. The second scavenger hunt that I have for you is one where students are just gonna share a little bit about themselves you are going to have them go out and find something that represents them and then bring it back and share with the class how that item represents them. Now my third one takes this a little bit further. Instead of having students find something that represents them, you're gonna call out one of the students' names and all of the other students are going to go find an object that they feel like represents that student and they're gonna share how those objects represent that student. So hopefully that is a fun way to lift up each of the members in your class and help them to feel good about themselves. My next one's another fun one that you can even tie in with uh, science a little bit and this is a five senses scavenger hunt. So you are going to describe something using one of your senses, and this also kind of ties in with sensory words as well, and students have to go find an object that represents that. So something stinky, something fuzzy, and students have to explain what sense they use when they find that object. Now the last one I have for you is another one that gets students sharing about themselves, and that is a photo scavenger hunt. And you are going to have students find photos that represent specific things. So for example, you might ask them to bring a photo from one of their birthdays, and it can be any birthday from their lifetime. You might ask them to bring a photo of a family member or a friend that's special to them or a photo of them doing something that they enjoy, but the photo opens up opportunities for students to share about themselves with everyone in the class. All right, I've got one more scavenger hunt for you, and this one's a little bit different from all of the other ones. For this one, you are going to have students bring three to five objects to your online learning environment with them, so they're not gonna get up and go look for things during the classroom meeting. Then what you're gonna do is you're gonna present a bunch of funny, fun scenarios, and for each scenario, students are going to share which of their objects they would use in that scenario. So if, for example, you might say something like, which of your objects could inspire an idea for a new television show? And students will hold up one of their objects and explain why it would be a good inspiration for a television show. You can also do some funny things like 
you row a boat to the middle of the lake and you lose your paddle. You have to use one of your objects to row back. Which one do you use? Things like that. Um, if you go to that blog post that I mentioned that's linked in the description, I have a bunch of silly questions that you can incorporate for this activity. So I would love to hear from you. Uh, like I said, I crawled Facebook groups and reached out to all of my teacher friends and tried to compile as many virtual scavenger hunt ideas that I could find, but I know there's a lot of other great ones out there too. So if you have a great idea for a virtual scavenger hunt that I didn't talk about in this video, please share it in the comment below. And if you've already done a virtual scavenger hunt or you're planning to do one soon, give this video a big thumbs up. And last but not least, make sure to subscribe to my channel because every week I release videos with new teaching tips, ideas, and inspiration for teachers, and I don't want you to miss out on any of those things. Until next time, happy teaching.